Up next, we begin a series called The Divorce Seekers, and we'll talk to a man who got up close and personal with those looking for what they call the Reno Cure. Place to go if you wanted a quick, simple exit from marriage. Thousands, including movie stars, socialites, and housewives, came seeking what they call the Reno Cure. Ed Pierce begins a two-part series tonight, revisiting this world through the eyes of a man who saw it from an unusual perspective, Ed. He saw it as a wrangler on a local dude ranch, one of those that catered to the unhappy spouse waiting for her court appearance. The divorce ranch was once a thriving, if exclusive, wing of the Nevada divorce industry. They are gone now, the industry with them. But for decades, in the mid-20th century, divorce and Reno were synonymous. In 1931, in the teeth of the Great Depression, the Nevada legislature created two industries, legalized gambling and the quickie divorce. Both set Nevada apart from the rest of the nation, morally and legally, and together would color the popular image of our state for decades to come. At the time, divorce required a wait of a year or more in most states. Nevada made it simple, six weeks residency and a list of legal grounds that required little proof. For those seeking marital freedom, Nevada, especially Reno, was the place to go. And so they came, by the thousands. Going to Reno became synonymous with getting a divorce. Columnist Walter Winchell called it getting renovated. Others called it the Reno Cure. The nation watched with a mixture of disapproval and fascination. Movies portrayed Reno as a threat to the American family, a place where wayward wives lost their way. Reno was the divorce capital of the world. That image came complete with at least one romantically tragic myth. Newly divorced women, it was said, would walk out of the Washoe County Courthouse, having just discarded the obligations of marriage, and would come here to the Truckee River Bridge and discard the symbol of those obligations, tossing their wedding bands into the Truckee River. There's little evidence it ever happened. If they did throw one in the Truckee, they went to the dime store and bought it, right. and then <laughs> did it because that was the myth. You know. Bill McGee should know. He worked at a local dude ranch, one that catered to the divorce trade during its heyday. If you came to Nevada seeking a divorce and had the money and the need of privacy, you came to one of the local dude ranches. McGee worked at the Flying M.E. in Washoe Valley. The clientele was upscale. We had the Eastern Socialites, uh, a social register, believe me, uh, ranging from uh, Roosevelt and Astor and DuPont, uh, Rockefeller, uh, it was uh, the cream of the crop. At the Flying M.E. or the nearby Washoe Pines or Donner Trails in Verdi, guests, mostly women, could wait out their six weeks residency in rustic comfort. We had a pool out there, which was probably the first one in Washoe Valley. And they could experience a bit of the Old West, spending days on trail rides in the Carson Range in the company and protection of a genuine cowboy like Bill McGee, and nights spending off the locals at a local watering spot. I had two jobs. I had a day job and a night job. My day job, I was, I was a wrangler, taking people, matching people up with the horses, making sure that they had the skills to ride that horse. And at night, uh, I would would load a station wagon and go for Carson City to what we call the Old Corner Bar, which was our favorite hangout in those days. And McGee is quick to say it added up to a darn good job. As a single guy at age 22, when I went to work here, I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. Now, McGee and his wife, Sandra, have written a book, The Divorce Seekers, that's chock full of pictures and personal stories from this colorful era of Nevada history and he'll share some of them with us tomorrow night in part two of our series. Well, I don't want to jump the gun on your story tomorrow <laughs> night, Ed, but McGee said he thought he'd died and gone yeah. to heaven. One has to wonder, a young cowboy, handsome guy around so many women on the rebound. Well, I can tell you there was a strict rule against fraternization, at least at the Flying M.E., but McGee says anyone who tells you it didn't happen is a damn liar. More on that and some of the famous guests of the Flying M.E. as well tomorrow night. All right, Ed, thanks. Each year, thousands came to Reno to untie the knot. The famous and the well-heeled usually stayed at one of the local dude ranches. Ed Pierce joins us now with part two of his series, The Divorce Seekers. Ed, these weren't working ranches, but they weren't exactly the standard dude ranch either. Now, Terry, they had kind of a specialized clientele. They would take other guests, but 
they definitely catered to the divorce trade. If you had the money and if you wanted privacy, the divorce ranch was where you wanted to stay. Nevada had a six weeks residency requirement for a divorce. You might as well spend that time enjoying the Western experience, beautiful scenery, trail rides, a protective company of some genuine cowboys, maybe even a little romance. Don't fence me in. The year was 1947. A young cowboy from Montana arrived in Reno seeking treatment for the malaria he had contracted in the Navy in World War II. Released from the Veterans Hospital, Bill McGee started looking for work. Eventually, a chance conversation at a Reno bar led to a job at the Flying M.E. in Washoe Valley. As a single guy at age 22, when I went to work here, I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. McGee had grown up on a working ranch, but as a dude wrangler, this job would be a little different. As a cowboy, you had certain skills you had to have to, to do your work. Uh, uh, as a dude wrangler, it was very good to have those skills, plus have some people skills, because, you know, your job was working with people. That meant pairing guests with horses that would match their skills on trail rides and chaperoning the guests on nightly forays into Carson City bars. Like any cowboy responsible for a herd, the rules were simple. You left with 10 guests, you returned with 10. Those staying at the Flying M.E. were under the protective care of owner Emily Pence Wood. Most were here seeking a divorce, but the chance to get away from the public and the press brought others, film stars like Clark Gable. And he and I go uh, riding and drink together like a couple cowboys. Ava Gardner was here. Uh, I've never forgotten her, and Sonda says I've never gotten over her, but I never really uh, had, wasn't ever that close to her, but would have been had I been welcome. With women on the rebound, spending days in the company of rugged young cowboys like Bill McGee, getting close was an ever-present issue at divorce ranches, and there were strict rules against it. But that doesn't mean it didn't happen. And. And if anybody says it didn't, they're a damn liar. Emmy had a strict rule against it when I went to work here because she'd had some bad experience with wild and woolly cowboys that uh, just didn't know how to behave. I'd been around a lot and, and knew when to be and how to behave. And so rather soon she was trusting me with the guests. But that didn't mean I didn't get a knock on the door once in a while at my bunkhouse. Understand Bill is admitting all of this decades later in the presence of his wife, Sandra, who co-authored their book, The Divorce Seekers. I have been asking him and encouraging him to write about this part of his life ever since I met him. Bunkhouse romances rarely lasted beyond a guest stay, though Bill says he did have offers, a ranch of his own, a home in Acapulco. Thanks but no thanks, this cowboy was no gigolo. But one day, the cowboy met his lady, the one who eventually became his first wife and Bill knew he had to make a change. Time for the cowboy to settle down. We left here because I decided I couldn't stay married if I <laughs> stayed on this job. So Bill McGee and his wife left the flying ME. The divorce ranches themselves lingered on for a decade more, their era finally ending with the liberalization of divorce laws elsewhere. Today, the flying ME is a private residence, but it holds a lot of colorful history of Nevada in the mid-20th century, a lot of memory for guys